copyrighted program created by Rio Grande. Reno Sheriff's Office calling all cars, attention all Reno Sheriff's cars to broadcast 200 at 219 Peavine Street, 219 Peavine. See the woman. dollars tonight, you might go out tomorrow and purchase a more costly automobile. But if you were wise, you'd go right on using police car performance gasoline because money can't buy a better gasoline than Rio Grande. This favorite fuel of the well-to-do and those in moderate circumstances alike is also the specified choice of the officials of 30 leading cities and counties throughout California. Rio Grande Cracked Gasoline is the always dependable driving force which powers more police cars, fire engines, ambulances, and other emergency equipment wherever it is sold than any other brand. And the reason back of all this universal popularity is neither accident nor mere guesswork. Police, fire, and hospital authorities selected Rio Grande Cracked because this fine motor fuel proved itself by actual test in competition against all the rest. They have to to have a gasoline that delivers quicker, right-on-the-nose stocking, steadier acceleration, long mileage endurance, greater reserve power, and the winning punch of speed if you need it. Rio Grande Crack is that gasoline. It has what it takes. It meets every rigid requirement of those who know their gasoline best because they drive the most. Countless motorists are profiting by the experience of these California authorities, and you too may find out for yourself by dropping in at your Rio Grande dealers tomorrow morning. Give that automobile of yours real police car performance by always using Rio Grande Cracked Gasoline, the West's most highly recommended gasoline. The fuel that gives you a longer, more efficient run for less money. The case we are to make was taken in the main from the confidential files of the Washoe County Nevada Sheriff's Office. Nevada Sheriff's Office. Nevada Sheriff's Office. Nevada Sheriff's Office. We therefore ask Sheriff Ray Root of Reno to prepare a personal message for you. For years, the nations of the world have tried to stop the harrowing evil of dope distribution. Prices paid by drug addicts for their daily stint of opium, morphine, or heroin are far higher today than at any time in the past 20 years. There is a shortage of dope in the underworld, due mainly to the efforts of the federal and state agencies in apprehending and convicting the leaders of dope smuggling rings. Federal policy today centers not so much upon arresting minor peddlers and trying through them to trace their sources of supply, but instead to strike at the roots of the traffic itself. It was this policy that led to the activities of federal agencies in cooperating with my office in breaking up the powerful dope ring in Reno. The situation is by no means definitely wiped out, but great headway has been made in destroying the power of dope in Nevada. I shall have more to say regarding this case at the close of the program. Calling All Cars is honored tonight to present as guest artist on this program the famous star of the stage and screen, Miss Catherine DeMille, in the role of Joyce McAllister. Our story opens in the middle of March, 1937, in the office of Sheriff Root in Reno. So you're from Santa Barbara, Miss McAllister. Yes, but for the next few weeks, I'm a permanent resident of Reno. Off for the old and on with the new, eh? Well, not for me. This is the one and only time. I hear you're interested in police work. Oh, in a way, yes. I've studied a little about criminology and all, but... Uh, well, we don't have much time for that sort of thing in this office. Usually, it's a case of touch and go when a crime is committed here. Does that apply to all of them? Well, all except junk. Junk? Yes, dope, narcotics. Oh. That that's the case with the federal government in the first place. About all we can do is to arrest a few addicts or maybe a small-time peddler or two. And that's about our limit. When it comes to reaching the biggies, that's out of the question. But why? Well, for a lot of reasons. First, we're all too well known around here to get the goods on them. The ones who should be enforcing the law don't always see fit to take action just when we think they should. And as a consequence, there's quite a lot of traffic and narcotics going on around here. Yes, uh, I've noticed that there was something wrong in some of the branches of the law enforcing business. Now, you take the case of Blanche Creek, T 
she's in jail now, charged with possessing narcotics. She's a sick woman, mentally sick more than anything else, but my budget doesn't even allow me to hire a matron. You know, that woman hasn't even got anybody to talk to. Well, perhaps there's something I could do. Well, you might talk to her if you want to. She's trying to shake off the junk. Junk? Oh, I know, dope. Sure. It takes six or eight grains a day. She's a mainliner, too. What's a mainliner? Well, uh, she injects the dope into the main vein when she can get a needle. And when she can't get one? Well, she scratches her skin till it bleeds and then squeezes a handkerchief or other piece of cloth that's been wet with a morphine solution. Mm, that's horrible. Yeah, maybe. But you'd be surprised what a person will do when the dope habit gets them. Sir, I've got an idea. Why not let me help you catch these so-called higher-ups? Well, I don't know just what you could do to help. Well, I could see this woman you have in jail, and maybe I could get her to tell where she gets the drugs. Oh, not a chance. If I sent you over there, she'd be suspicious right away. Oh, she doesn't have to know you sent me. I don't see how we can keep her from it. So what's the penalty in this state for writing worthless checks? About 90 days. Depends on the person, I guess. All right, I'm going to write a check. I'll get my hotel to cash it. I'll write it on a bank where I have no account, and that'll make an outside case against me. You can put me in jail with that woman. That's a serious thing, Miss McAllister. Is anything more serious than the peddling of narcotics? The person's already helplessly addicted. Well, when you put it that way, I guess not. You see to it that I'm placed where I can talk to Blanche Creek, and I'll get all the information you need. A few days later, Joyce McAllister sat on the edge of a jail cot, looking into the pain-wracked face of Blanche Creek. Suddenly, the woman sat bolt upright on her cot and seized the girl's wrist. Get me a bindle, will you? Get me something. I can't stand this. I've got to have it. I've got to. Oh, quiet, quiet. You'll be all right. I won't be all right. I know what's coming. Pretty soon I'll go to pieces again. It'll be horrible. Maybe if I knew where to go, I could get some for you. I know I can get it. <laughs> where? <laughs> no. Don't let them give me any. I can beat it. I can stick it out. The hard way. I want to beat it. When did you have any last? Two days ago. See, I'm already sneezing. That's a good sign. As soon as the sneezing stops, I'll be off the junk. But, but don't you think you should sort of taper off? No. Oh, tell these people, no matter how hard I beg, don't give me the junk. Let me do it the hard way. Oh, but that'll take us a long time. I don't care how long it takes. The hard way is the only sure way. I've been mainlining six and seven grains a day. You can't keep that up. It must be awfully expensive. Yeah. It takes a couple of hundred bucks a month. Sometimes more to buy the stuff. That's why so many of us have to start stealing and robbing. As long as I'm on the junk, I can't work. So figure it out for yourself. I don't think it can be figured out. I'm just one of hundreds like me in this town. Thousands, I'd say. How'd you get started? Well, I don't remember exactly. But sometime I was in school. <laughs> High school. I was only about 16 men. Some of us started smoking marijuana. Still for fun, you know. Then, little by little, we got the more powerful stuff still... Here I am. You, you mean to say it was possible for you to get drugs as a high school girl? Yeah, it's, a, and it's easier now than it was then. The kids are being made junkers every day. The traffic has to have more junkers to get a bigger market. Oh, but surely these men, these peddlers, don't sell dope to children. Oh, don't they. That's what you think. The junkers have to peddle it and make new converts. That's the only way they can get the money to buy their own stuff. This town's full of it. Most of us came here to get divorced. What we need is divorce from drugs. Don't the police do any more? The law. Bah! Why, the biggest part of the law is the biggest crook among the junk dealers. Who is he? Never mind. Never mind. I've said too much already. Forget it. Listen, don't squeal on me, dearie. And, and don't let him give me any more. I want to beat it. Oh, go get a doctor. Get somebody. Give me some. Give me some drugs. Give me some help. Give me some help. <laughs> Tell you, Sheriff, I couldn't stand it. There she lay, writhing in pain, screaming for dope and pleading with me to get it, and still feeling that she didn't want it. Oh, I thought I'd go mad. I shouldn't have let you go in there by yourself. Oh, we've got to do something to help this woman. We've got to do something to help all these others who are trying to fight a habit that's overpowering them. I tell you, I've seen enough and heard enough to last me a lifetime. And you've been there only a week. I've been in this place for years, seeing what you've seen, but I couldn't do anything about it. Why couldn't you do something about it? You're an officer of the law, aren't you? Yes, but what can I do? I've known for months of the increase in the traffic. 
Everywhere I turn, we run up against a blank wall of influence. Influence that we can't break down. We've got no funds to make purchases for evidence. And even if we did have, every peddler in town knows all my men. Besides, the best we can do is pinch the small fry. We can't touch the higher-ups. I can. With the information this woman has given me, I'm going out, and I'm going to find out who's at the head of this dope traffic. I'm going hey, to... Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> you might not be so lucky if someone heard you. Say, if I'd known it was going to affect you this way, My I'd... mind's made up. I'm going to find out first if Blanche Creek told the truth. Then I'm going to find out why something can't be done about it. You know, it's just occurred to me that you might have something there. Nobody in this town knows you. At least no one in that element. You've been in jail a week. They probably know that. They probably know you've been talking to this woman. You might be just the person I need. Well, let's pretend I am anyway, hmm? I wonder if you realize, though, what you're sticking your neck into. Well, listen, I'm no baby. I can take it. And just the same. It's dangerous. These junk dealers have a big thing. They'll not let a girl upset the apple cart. Listen, if you're with me, say so. If you're not, I'll go it alone. I'm with you. To the limit. You're about the only person around here who could expect results. But I warn you, nobody's going to peddle junk to a non-user. And you hardly look like a junker. Well, don't forget that I spend a week in a cell with Blanche Crete. I know how to operate. Besides, I can say I want it for her. Well, maybe that'll work. Anyway, it's worth trying. Anything's worth trying. It'll help even one person who's in the condition Blanche Crete is. At any rate, you're going to need some practical instructions. Now, you'll have to start by buying a bindle. Just a small package? Yeah, just enough for one shot. Buy it from any old alley peddler. Oh, but it's not the alley peddlers we want. Mrs. Creed told me that the very man was possible... Yes, now, you take it easy. You start with a bindle, and then you gradually work up until you're buying it by the ounce. And then even by the half pound for big dough. Only, I don't know where the big dough's coming from. I'll get it some way. I have some money of my own. I'll spend every penny of it. I'll get some more somewhere else. Well, if you get started, and it looks like you're going to get on the inside of something, we'll find a way to make the buys. After all, there's still a government in Washington... Have you any idea who these higher-ups are? Yes, I have. But we won't go into that now. Say, there's a Chinese angle to this case, and that always spells danger and trouble. I'm not afraid. Uh, what did Mrs. Creed suggest that you do? She told me that I could buy the stuff by standing in front of a cigar store down near the bus depot on Main Street. Hey, is that place peddling junk? No, she said not to go inside. The, the man who runs the place is on the level as far as she knows. But that's a contact point. I just go there and stand around till one of the peddlers comes along. And that place is handy to some pretty tough gambling joints. You better watch your step. Now, the gamblers in on this, too? Oh, no. Having the peddlers around is not so hot for their business. It takes a lot of capital to hit the junk. Well, tough or not, I'm going down there. I'll get to the bottom of this thing if it takes the rest of my life. That night, Joyce took up her stand in front of a tobacco shop. Her heart pounded violently as she stood in the glare of the light from the flickering street lamp. She held the fur collar of her bright crimson jacket tight about her throat. The chill wind took her skirt into a swirling shadow. She trembled with apprehension as she heard single footsteps approach, stop, then pass on. In a moment, the footsteps returned. On two successive nights, Joyce McAllister made dollar purchases of morphine. But on the third night, another man approached. Fear mounted in strangling suddenness. You got some more, sister. Gee, good. I need it. What do you want with this stuff? You ain't no junker. I, I want it for Blanche. She's in jail. Oh, so you got to see her, did you? Sure. I was in the same cell with her for a week. <laughs> she needs it. Okay. I'll be seeing you. Say, hey, wait a minute. Yeah? I need a bigger amount. Several bindles. Uh -huh. What for? Well, Blanche thinks she's going up for a wrap. She's throwing it up. Oh, well, I always said a woman could hide this stuff better than a man. Well... How about it? Sure. Yeah, here's six spindles. Enough? Mm, it'll do for this time. How much? Six bucks. Well, here you are. Five and one. Six dollars. Yeah. When can I get some more? Anytime, sister. Hey, what's your name, kid? Joy. Jo Jean. Oh, fine. You're okay, Jean. Anytime you want more, let me know. Well, I want more right away. As a matter of fact, I want an ounce or two. An ounce? Sure, I'm tired of fooling around with bindles. Yeah, but Jean, an ounce. Well, if you can't get it for me, I'll get it from somebody else. No, no, that ain't it. Only I ain't got that much. I'll have to pass the word up front. I don't know, though. Hey, what's the matter with you guys? You're too wishy-washy for me. Well, Joe said you was all right, and I guess he knows. But all I can do is pass the word up. 
cheap, Jean. I wouldn't dare go to the front myself. When can I get it? I don't know. I'll pass the word and get Jodo. You'd better drop in a Wu Sings down on Peavine. At the public club? Yeah, that's the place. 219. Just drop in casual like. If the word's good, the chinks will fix you up. Okay, thanks. Say, hey, Jean, if you make the contact okay, remember I can handle some of the junk for you. I'll think it over. Just give me a break, Jeannie. Well, I'll see what I can do. I'm new here, you know. Just got into L.A. You pass the word along and you'll never regret it. Back in the office of Sheriff Ruth, Joyce McAllister discussed the next move. Elated at her progress, Ruth explains the switch of peddlers. So they got suspicious when you kept buying and switched men on you. Yeah, but we're on the right track. They'll send the word along that I'm okay. Well, that means the time has come for the bigger buys. But we still don't know where the money's coming from. I think I do. Yeah? What's your plan? Let me have that phone a minute. I want to talk with Henry J. Anslinger, National 6400, Washington, D.C. I'll wait. Hey, how does it happen you know that number? Hmm, yeah, ways, ways. Hello? No, I must talk to Mr. Anslinger. I'm sorry, but no one else will do. Will you call back, please? Yes, from the sheriff's office. Miss McAllister. Thank you. Out? I'll well, red tape, probably. Well, why insist, why insist on talking to the commissioner himself? Well, I found out enough to know that there are some leaks somewhere along the line. I'm not taking any chances. Well, if I may repeat myself, I think you have something there. I know I have. I've got something else. I've got a date to go to the public club tonight. I need an escort. Hey, you've got something there, too. Hey, wait a minute. There's a newspaper man from San Francisco out in the clerk's office. He's not known here. Maybe he'll do. What's he like? Oh, the strong, silent type. And he bites his nails. I'll feed him and bring him in. <laughs> I'll bring him in, but you take him out and feed him. I'll let him feed me. Well, that's probably my call. Sheriff Root speaking. Here, yes, just a moment. For you. Hello? Oh, hello, Miss Anslinger. This is Joyce McAllister of Santa Barbara. Yes, I'm calling from the sheriff's office in Reno. We found some rather startling information about a dope ring here. No, I haven't taken it up with the local office for some very good reasons. Oh, no, I can't bear with discussion now, but I called to ask that some outside men be sent here at once. In just a moment, I, I think the sheriff will corroborate my story. Here, tell us. Hello, Commissioner. Yes, she's been working in my office for some time now. I think she's uncovered some real leads. Oh, fine. What name? Oh, yes, Nugent. H.T. Nugent. Well, we'll be looking for him. Well, that's that. We send a Nugent from Chicago by airplane and two men from San Francisco. They'll have ample funds for any purchases we want to make, and they'll be strictly undercover. Well, now about that uh, news hawk from San Francisco. <laughs> Twenty-four hours later, Joyce McAllister, for the second time and alone, walked into the hallway of the building at 219 Peavine Street. A loose board creaked in the floor as she passed. She barely noticed the board, but somewhere in the room above, a light flashed, and two slit-like eyes peered down at the girl in the crimson jacket. At last, the door opened silently, and a moon-faced Chinese in green silk pajamas and a soft sole shoe bowed her into a room. Please? Yes. One moment, please. Good evening. Mr. Wu Sing? At your service, Miss Jean. I've heard about you. And I have heard of you. Oh, that makes us even. Yes, doesn't it? Yes. Would you like to see my establishment? Yes, sir, I would. This way, please. These are, as you know, places of great contentment. Well, at least your guests seem contented. Opium brings great surcease from trouble. Oh, but a terrific hangover. So I am told. Well, that's a pretty girl in that booth. Very. She comes from a very fine and very old family in New York. She has been here two weeks. In there? Yes, in there. After all, why not? Yes, why not? Then? Yes, master. No more for that boy in there. No, master. What's wrong with him? No more money. But when he wakes up? Who knows? Perhaps he will not. 
wake up. Do many of them not wake up? A few. They do not matter since they have passed their stage of usefulness. No, I, I don't imagine they do. Will you go in, please? This is my private office. Thank you. Uh, would you mind telling me why you let me in here without seeing me? As a matter of fact, you were under observation from the time you opened the front door. That loose board you tread upon, uh, that is a signal to the man in the room above. Had you not met with his approval, the other door would not have opened. Oh, I see. Well, then there's no danger for Ray. None. Uh, you may be assured of that. <laughs> That's a relief. But the door is merely an extra precaution. Our real protection is my partner. You must meet him. I'd be delighted. Who is he? You will learn that when you meet him. Now, I believe you wish to make a purchase? Yes, I want an ounce tonight. That will be $200, please. Say, that's pretty high. It is my price. All right, I'll take it. My servant will deliver it to you in the other room. And so I pay him the money? No, I will take that. Okay, here you are. Now, when do I meet this partner of yours? Whenever you wish. All right, tomorrow night. I want two more ounces of junk, and I'll pay only 195 bucks for them. Tell him that, will you? Would you not like to call him and tell him yourself? Oh, it's an idea. I'll call him from the drugstore on the corner. Or do you have a phone? I have no phone here. Well, I'll see you tomorrow night at the club. Yes, tomorrow night. <laughs> half an hour received the morphine. With her purchase, she reported to the sheriff's office where the federal agent Nugent awaited it. In about half an hour, a man came up to me with this box of cigars and took the money I had marked. Mm, I see. Did you know him? Well, I never saw him before, but he said he was sent by the chief. Uh, then you still haven't seen the chief, huh? Well, not yet, but I talked to him over the phone. Yes, I know. Sheriff Ruth made dictograph records of the conversation. Oh, we had his line tapped for a week. Well, what's the next move? Uh, you still have an appointment to meet him tomorrow night, haven't you? Mm-hmm. All right, I'll go with you. When you meet the chief, come outside the club. And if you've made a purchase, uh, open your purse and close it. Like this? Yeah, that's right. Now, I'll give the signal and my men will close in from the alley. Sheriff Root will go in the front way. I'll have men stake at the chief's office, and if he gives us the slip, we'll nab him there. And when the fun starts, you beat it. All right. I wish you luck. <laughs> You'll need the luck if the chief gets suspicious. I know. I might go to sleep in one of Mr. Wu Sing's opium rooms. And uh, not wake up, huh? Oh, good night. Good night. My partner, Mr. Oh, yes, yes, I think we've met before. By uh, telephone? Yes, uh, so you have. Yes, but I've been looking forward to this. Yes, no doubt you have. Working as you are, alone. Oh, yes, alone. Uh, just what do you do with all the junk you're buying? Oh, I managed to get rid of it in time. I see. I understand you operated in L.A. Uh -huh. A little? Lately? Yes, why? Oh, nothing. Used to be in charge of our office, right? Long? Seven years. Well, you should know the racket from top to bottom. Yes. Yes, I do. From both sides. Yes, from both sides. Miss Jean has voiced distrust of our assistant. Yes, I don't like this third-party stuff. I deal a direct or not at all from now on. I see. Well, mm -hmm. I think that can be arranged. You need any stuff tonight? Yes, now. Oh, you know what I'm Many of them. Good. Let Jean have what she wants. You uh, have the money, of course. Right here in my purse. Good. Now take it and take care of it for you, if you wish. All right. Here you are. Hmm. Is your share will? I thanks to your your package, Miss Jean. Thank you. Well, I'll be running along. Just a minute. I uh, I'll show you the door. Uh, nice weather we're having, isn't it? Yes, isn't it? You been here long? Six weeks. I see. Just long enough. Mm, too long to suit me. You, uh, staying long? Oh, it all depends. I, I must have lost my handkerchief. Well, maybe it's in my purse. Oh, here, let me open the door for you. Oh, thank you. 
Oh, here's my hanky. I had in my purse all the time. You're under arrest, Hanson. Huh? What is this, a joke? I'd say it was pretty serious when a federal narcotic agent turns out to be head of a dope ring. Why, what are you talking about? You haven't got anything on me. This is a frame up. Oh, is that so? Wait a minute. What's that? That's Sheriff Ruth and my men arresting your Chinese Confederate. Now, look here. You can't get away with this. You haven't got a shred of proof. No, I, a few minutes ago, Mr. Hanson, you told me you had been in charge of the Federal Narcotic Bureau in Los Angeles for seven years. Yeah, so what? Well, it seems to me that in that length of time, you'd recognize marked money when you see it. Marked money? Yes, you've got a pocket full of it. I just gave it to you in exchange for an ounce of dope. I knew I should have taken care of you right away. I warned Wu that we were playing with dynamite. Yes, and this time it exploded right in your face. You may know some friend who foolishly denies himself the pleasure and satisfaction of the best things this life has to offer because he proceeds on the theory that various products, which he describes as almost as good as the real thing, costs less. That, my friends, is not thrift. It's real extravagance. It is not thrift to use a motor oil that breaks down, ruining your motor and sentencing it to a premature death. Millions of motorists in 45 nations throughout the world have discovered the real money-saving qualities of Sinclair motor oil. They have learned that the so-called almost as good lubricants do not cost less in original purchase price and actually cost more in the repair bills for which they are to blame. If Sinclair motor oils cost more, which they do not, you would still be wise to Sinclairize for safety with this tougher, smoother lubricant. Sinclair motor oils do not break down because this jelly and wax are completely removed by a patented Sinclair process. Really, friends, when you know all the facts, you really can't afford to experiment with lubricants which claim to be almost as good as Sinclair motor oils. Sinclairize for safety by ordering your Rio Grande dealer to refill the crankcase with Sinclair Opaline. The oil that comes in the sealed, tamper-proof cans and is stronger, smoother, and tougher and costs only 25 cents a quart. Have it done tomorrow morning when you drop in for another tank full of that Power Plus Ping Minus Police Car Performance Rio Grande Cracked Gasoline. And again we hear from Sheriff Ruth. With a few minor dramatic liberties, this story occurred exactly as you heard it tonight. Four Chinese, Hanson and his accomplice, were brought to the trial. The man Wu Sing startled us all by making a full confession, as did the contact man for Hanson. Only the narcotic agent insisted upon his innocence. His case is now on appeal, although his first trial resulted in conviction on 12 counts of his indictment. Definitely, this was a crime that did not pay. I wish to express my own and the thanks of the citizens of Reno to Joyce McAllister for her splendid work in this case. County Sheriff's Office, calling all cars, attention all sheriff's cars, cancellation broadcast 200, suspect in this case now in custody, that's all. Frederick Lindsley, bidding you good night for Rio Grande.